When it comes to the history of the modern drum set, it's a relatively short one and going back in history is quite easy. Today's drum set actually started out being called a trap set, abbreviation for contraption, because that's literally what it was back in the day. It was a contraption and a hodgepodge mix of certain kick drums, wood blocks, cowbells, whistles, sound effects. This was all brought about during the vaudeville era. Soon after, with the beginnings of big band, jazz, Dixieland swing, we then now start to see the development of what we have today as the modern drum set. Now, over time, the drum set has made some great strides and seen some monumental shifts with design and craftsmanship. And one of those changes was the rims mounts, developed in the 80s. Because what the theory of the rims mount was, if the rim is allowed to resonate without the tom mount being attached to the actual shell, well then maybe the kick drum will too. Because up until then, most toms were mounted on the kick. Now there were exceptions, of course. I'm not saying that it was this that solely began the Virgin movement. Actually, there were Virgin kicks before that. But for the most part, you would see toms mounted on the kick. It was in the late 80s and definitely in the beginning of the 90s where the Virgin kick became the norm. And that trend stayed until current times. Which brings me to the reason why I am making this video. Hello everybody, I'm Brian Christopher Mendes and welcome to Mendiesel 101. My web series that deals with gear, lessons, humor, and anything that I've learned in the past 22 years of my professional career. Today, we are going to be doing a shootout between virgin kicks and non-virgin kicks. Now, for those who are not familiar with that term, basically, virgin means there's no hole in the shell of the kick drum. No hole? There's no hole in the shell of the kick drum for a tom to be mounted onto, right? Henceforth, what you see right here, this would be considered a non-virgin shell. The tom is mounted on top of the shell. This pole actually goes all the way through the shell. And this is traditionally how toms and kicks came together, traditionally. Like I said before, there were kicks before that were virgin that had no toms mounted to them. That is not something that was invented in the late 80s, early 90s, but it is something that became prevalent in the 90s, definitely. You will find plenty of old school drum sets that there was no mounting brackets on the actual shell. These mounting brackets differed, where the actually mounting bracket was a tube that went across the actual shell of the... Uh, is... I just realized... <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so the, 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 the tube... <laughs> <laughs> the mounting bracket was this pipe that was about this long that it basically like a, a luggage handle that went on the side of the kick drum and you can put your tom on there and you can slide it either this way or that way right to position your tom and you had four mounting screws that went into the shell this was a very minimalistic approach uh, but there was also a little style of mounting which was this a hole right through the shell hole goes right through and then you have your mounting bracket off the pole. And again, I am making that motion. <laughs> I'm gonna need this. Yeah, I'm drinking. Yeah, who you judging? You better not be judging me. I'll come right to this camera. And say, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, make a move, sucker. As a working sideman, I find myself in a bunch of different situations in live performances. A lot of them dealing with rush setup times or actually getting to use a house kit during set change. And one of the things I noticed immediately was whenever I got to play on a house kit that had this style of mounting system, I was immediately able to put the tom where I needed it. Felt really good the entire night. But I also noticed that I was able to move my cymbal stands around wherever I wanted them as well. Because when you have a virgin kick, if the tom is mounted off of the stand, the stand, when you move it, the tom moves with it. Now, some of you are saying, hey man, well, why don't you just mark everything off, mark the stands off. It's not that simple when you're a sideman, because my gig changes from night to night, 
from week to week. If you're a guy that plays in just one band and you go to your rehearsal and you set up and you play there and then you split and you go do a gig with that band and that's all you do, you're really not going to go through the issues of what working sidemen go through. But as a working sideman, my kit changes. One night I will have one tom, one kick, one floor. Usually it's always one kick. Uh, in one floor, or it can be double floor, one tom, or it can be two tom, two floors, or it could be kick, snare, and tom, uh, and floor tom, no tom. But my setup changes, so therefore I can't mark my cymbal stands and I can't mark my rug. It just doesn't work that way for me and other guys like me. So our setup is changing and our setup times don't. Our setup times are such that we're rushed, and when you're rushed, you don't set up the way you would like to all the time. It'll look the same, but drums are a very physical thing. So if you're used to playing and practicing and making the motions at the house, and you're doing this, and you get to the gig, and that time is just slightly off. Slightly off. All of you know what I'm talking about. You're like, yep, just, a, just slightly off. And it's just, shoo, you can miss it. Or you hit it, and you don't get it dead center and you get it towards the edge and it makes that bang. You're not getting the full effect of what you need to do and you're not playing the way you need to and you start to feel uncomfortable and deep down inside, you don't play the way you would really like to play. I've literally played, went to hit a cymbal and because of the stage or whatever, for whatever reason, I was not able to get the cymbal where I wanted it, crash, completely miss it. You're talking about a 24 inch crash and I miss it. And people notice that, yeah. And I've seen that too before. I saw it, I saw it bro. I ain't gonna judge you, I've been there. So after all of this, it started to make me think, is a virgin kick really all of that? Does it sound that much better where I need to be uncomfortable night after night playing? Because let's face it, most of the time I am playing club dates. I do get to play headlining dates, but as a working drummer and as a working sideman, I do a lot of club dates. And you say, what's the difference between club dates and, and headlining? Well, headlining, you, you don't have to move your set. It's set, you set it up, you get ample time to set it up, sound check, you get everything you, where you want it, and boom, you walk off and nobody touches it to the end of the night. One day on Facebook, I posted a question about virgin versus non-virgin kicks. Now, of course, it was a well-discussed topic. I got this point of view and I got this point of view. But one comment really stuck out to me, and it was a drummer who has played on many hit records. He sarcastically said, I don't remember any of those producers or engineers telling me, gee, this would sound so much better if you had a virgin kick. And that's when I said, okay, I'm gonna pull the trigger. Fast forward, I become a Dixon artist, and I order this kit with this configuration. The kit came in, and boom, sounded fantastic. Plenty of boom when I recorded it. It sounded great when I played live, and overall, the kit just sounded phenomenal. I went out and bought a bunch of really lightweight stands because none of the toms are hanging off of the stands, and immediately noticed my back thanked me for it. I was able to move the stands around just either that much, maybe that much, but I no longer had to worry about the Tom being affected by these incremental little movements of where I wanted my stands to go. I was about to put a Tom mount on the kick of my other kit when I realized that I have two kicks that are the same size, same wood. This is the perfect time to do a shootout. So without further ado, let's dive in and see if this kick with this style of Tom mount cost me or anyone else substantial loss of tone. I first started with just the kicks. I took away the toms and the snare and everything else, and I just wanted to get the kicks with their pure sound. I tuned both to the same pitch and proceeded to record both kicks. I would like to point out that before we go any further, my style of playing the kick drum is whenever I hit the kick, I immediately release the beater. So the head, beater, I come back off immediately. What I find is this allows the head and the shell to resonate. I also use minimal muffling. I use two hand towels, one in the back and one in the front. They're rolled with Velcro and held in place underneath the heads. This way they do not move when I'm transporting them or reheading them. Both towels have two towels wrapped inside of them. The reason I say about my technique because I will be bringing this up later in the video. So after I recorded both of them and listened back to the playback, what I found is they both sounded exactly the same.
Now for the second part of the test, which is more of a true to life situation because now you're gonna be playing with a full kit. I've read in articles and forums that the real difference is when the stand and the tom is in place on top of the kick and that the difference is obvious due to the weight of the tom being on top and constricting the kick shell from resonating fully like that of a virgin kick drum. Would this be the case? Was I about to hear a drastic difference between the two? And the answer I found was no. Nope. Nah, son. Hell no! After playing both kits and listening back to the tracks, I found no real difference between the two. After playing both kits and listening back to the tracks, I found no real difference between the two. But what I did find is having the toms mounted on top of your kick has a lot of benefits, such as easier setup time and time again, and for it to be in the same position time and time again. The tom or toms feel more comfortable while playing. The toms shake less with this mounting system. What I find is when you have stands, sometimes you can find that the toms will shake when they do this, right? And you guys know if you're on a certain drum riser that is not really reinforced, you'll notice sometimes on stage when you're playing, you can see this motion happening with your cymbal stands, right? And the toms on top of them. Everything is shaking. Not so much with this style of setup. And also, cymbal stands are a lot easier to move around with this style of mounting system. You don't have to worry about when you move the stand, you also have to move the tom with it. So I want to bring back a point that I said earlier. My technique of how I play a kick drum, which is I release the beater off of the head as soon as I strike it. This allows for the kick to resonate. Now I will bury the beater with different styles, certain styles of rock and certain styles of R&B. I am definitely burying the beater in. And as well as certain songs during whatever person I might be playing for. If the song calls for that sound, then I will bury the beater into it. Right. Why I bring this up is because I notice a lot of players will bury the beater into the head. There's nothing wrong with this. This is just a observation and it's a certain sound and style. But what I'm getting at is if I'm more concerned about resonation and I find no difference between the two of virgin and non-virgin kicks, I really don't see a point in getting a virgin kick when you're going to put a bigger pillow in it and you're going to bury the beater into it. You're killing it anyway, right? So why sacrifice being comfortable time and time again when you set up? So many different benefits of having this style of mounting system as opposed to Virgin. If you're bearing the beater and putting a bigger pillow into it, you might want to ask yourself, what am I sacrificing? This is just a thought. I always say there is no wrong choice. It's what's better for you, right? Think about it. So, I always like to conclude at the end of the videos with this. You have so many choices. You have this choice and that choice. Some of them are great and some of them are not so great. Great thing is, I don't believe there's a best. I believe what is best for you. For me, I like this style of mounting system. It's very comfortable. If I'm being rushed or not being rushed, my tom is going to be there. It's always in the position that I need it to be and I can move my cymbals around. And what I've noticed is, I did not lose any sound quality. So with that being said, what is going to be your next choice the next time you buy a drum set? I'm Brian Christopher Mendes. This is Mendiesel 101. Peace and chicken grease, motherfuckers.